Namaste everyone. Very warm welcome to Satsang today. Satguru Shri Muji Baba Ki Jai. We have been taught to believe that our existence exists completely in this sense presented world. You might think that your complete existence is here in this objective appearance which is appearing in front of you. But Satsang is introducing to you to that which is beyond these four dimensions. Three dimensions of space and the fourth dimension of time. The greater you is not contained in this. Your existence, when you check even right now, is not constrained by up and down, left and right, front and back. These three dimensions don't matter to it. Also, it is not changing in time. It has no duration. It has no start time and end time. But all objective things in the world do. Now what has happened is that in the design of this world we have been trained to believe that we are an object in this. Even when we consider ourselves to be a soul or some term like that, we feel like that must be contained within this three-dimensional object. Because we have not learned to look beyond this. Even when we are recognizing something so deep within us right now, we might believe that it is happening inside the body. This is not true. You are not contained in this body. That is why when you are checking on the boundary of your existence, you are finding that you cannot reach it. For many of you, the core of this, the primal vibration of this existence might seem to emanate from that which might feel like the physical heart. But it isn't. It isn't your physical heart. It is so much greater than that. Now, even after recognizing this, there is one voice which is constantly telling you that you are a limited entity, a limited self. Okay? And the Mahamantra of this voice is, what's in it for me? Okay? What's in it for me? But this me is in a complete contradiction with the me that you are truly recognizing yourself to be. When I say, can you tell me your boundary? Where do you define it? And we've done these experiments over and over to see whether the boundary, the seeming boundary of the body is contained within you or whether you are contained within the boundary. We have checked this. And you have not found a physical boundary to yourself. Also, when you have checked on your existence, you have found that you are timeless. And yet, because our habit has been to believe what the mind is saying about me, then it can feel like the spiritual journey is full of contradiction and conflict. Because you are struggling with two voices. 
this voice which you might feel is coming from outside you is actually the voice of your own presence your own being not unmolested by your mind and then there is the voice from the mind both are saying completely different things this voice is saying that the universe is an appearance within you and your mind is saying that you are an appearance within this universe now my advice is don't believe either voice don't have to believe me stay with your own insight i mean even if your insight is i don't know stay with that don't fool yourself with any concept especially not any concept that you hear in satsang is it because if it just remains a concept then it is not useful it is not self recognition don't have to parrot the master stay with your own insight and don't be scared about the i don't know it is a false training in school they shouldn't fail students for saying i don't know <laughs> is it that is why it has become a fear to say i don't know even in satsang it can feel like if i say i don't know and here everybody is claiming i am the self i am awareness i am beyond you see it might feel like oh where am i all of them are so advanced but you don't know for many of them it might still be coming conceptually just heard the highest words doesn't mean that it is actually me so we must remain with our own insight about who we are and if your insight about yourself is that i am actually a person and here it is then you know there's a 1000 dollar prize you <laughs> see i've had this on offer for a long time but nobody has produced this person they have only produced a belief system only produced a belief system that i must be that which is concerned about my relationship i must be that which is concerned about my money i must be that which is concerned about even freedom but nobody has ever produced this one to me and said here it is i guess we have produced a body and said here i am so i say where is this body concerned with freedom is it it is not there is this body concerned with manager at work with money in the bank it is not concerned with any of that so we are not even representing this body fully we are representing this mythical entity or me the ego and we have defined a boundary for it we have defined a just a mental boundary for ourselves and because we have reinforced this belief over and over that's why we need to have satsang also over and over <laughs> because one belief has been reinforced over many 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 years maybe multiple lifetimes therefore it can seem like we have such some over and over also maybe over multiple lifetimes <laughs> so this is what is happening here one set of conditioning which is being let go off and many times in such some new set of conditioning is picked up it is picked up what we say I see many times that after satsang is over, uh, and especially for those who are new, we end up speaking a lot of Advaita, <laughs> but just conceptually. And sometimes I'm surprised as to how much Advaita the Sangha can speak. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a lot of times, uh, what can happen is one set of concepts 
replaced by another set of thoughts. Because something feels this emptiness. To be empty of concepts, as we have been convinced that it's a bad idea. If you went to science class in seventh standard and you were empty of all scientific concepts, I'm sure the teacher would get very upset with you. <laughs> so we have been trained to rely on these crutches called concepts and we have relied on them for our own identity. So now if I ask you, who does the I represent? And I request you not to rely on any concept of it, but your own insight about it. That is the only answer I'm really interested in. But the answer can be a non-verbal answer. It can be a I don't know. Or if some ineloquent words are arising, trying to describe the indescribable, I'm very happy to hear that. Usually the eloquent answers are, <laughs> you just have to be passed on. So this uh, question, who does I represent? How is it when I ask you not to refer to a concept? You see, because this I must be very natural to us. If you need a concept to remember who I am, it cannot be this. Because we don't need a concept to remember anything even about this body. I'm sitting, for example, we say. We don't need to remember a concept. It seems so natural. We don't have to refer to, okay, who am I? Okay, what was the best answer? Oh, Bhagavan said, I am awareness. You see, it's not like that. In our natural existence, what are we? We have been convinced that in our natural existence, we are this body-mind. But is this true? Before your first notion comes, who are you? There are many ways to ask this question. One of the most potent ways is to ask you, what is aware of your existence? What is aware of your existence? Is that an object? Is that a thought? Do you have to think about it? You don't have to. No, naturally, I exist and I'm aware of it. The I that is aware, what is the shape and size of that? And we've answered this conceptually for a long, long time. So can we experiment with not using a concept and answering it with this deeper insight, with our pure intuitive seeing? There, I'm happy to exchange notes. And you can tell me, Ananta, you say, 
I am not contained in this sense presented world. But when I checked, I found I am contained in it. Show me that. Happy to look together like that. <laughs> see? But just conceptually, uh, I must be this or I must be that. So, see, just inferentially is not inquiry. To look together is the inquiry. If you don't want to counter me, you can say Ashtavakra said, you said Ashtavakra said, you are the shoreless ocean in which the arcs of the universe come and go. See? Ashtavakra said this. So when you have checked about yourself, you can say, I don't find myself to be this boundless. I find I found myself bound. but from your looking, not from your presuming, inferring, judging. That is all mental. Say something? Really like, uh, say something. Yeah. So, uh, just like uh, you mentioned, like, what the idea of presence There is this uh, feeling that, uh, you know, I don't know. So, uh, there is this limited part which is essentially saying that do I care? Uh -huh. Or <laughs> why do I care? Yes. So let's say there's one part which is I don't know. Right. Now the part which is saying do I care? Would you categorize that as a thought or would you categorize that as a feeling? Or? It's coming together uh -huh. uh, as to yes. that I am here right now. Yes. I'm listening to this question yes. and both are coming together yes. in the sense that I I am I'm reasonably sure I don't know yes. the answer. But this is also it's arising that it's why do I care? Yes. Now let's not even get into the content of whatever is arising. What witnesses this arising? Whether it is a feeling or a thought. More like a thought. Like whatever it might be. It's the same way the other thought or the answer appeared that I do not know. Yes. Is it in the same so way? So I said so these concepts will appear. Right. I said, let's try not to answer conceptually. That's my invitation. Right. right. So my invitation now is to say, okay, this is what is arising. Do I really care? What is in it for me? You see, that's another way of saying yeah. what's in it for me, actually. Right? So we already said that, that that's the Maha Mantra of the mind. What's in it for me? So let's see if you can, for a change, instead of being so concerned about what it is saying, go deeper and see what witnesses that which is saying this. Right. So can we explore this together? Or is the I don't care so loud that we're not able to? Not to okay. Not so loud. So let's look at that then. Whatever might be appearing, that might have gone by now. Something else will come. Right. See? So when something comes or there is nothing, does the witness of that vanish? No. That stays. So what can we say about that? Uh, is it some space? Is yeah. it something intimate to you? No, so it, it's more like uh, when a question is being asked yes. like that uh, is when it appears. Generally, it doesn't appear yes. saying that whether. Agreed, but I'm saying that that which witnesses the coming of the question right. and the vanishing of it, right. that witnessing right. is that intimate to you? I can I know it that that happens. Yes. That yes. a thought or comes yes. and it may or may not register. Sometimes it doesn't even register in the course. Yes. And then sometimes it does register. Agreed. Now, that which is aware of the mind, the aware of the question, that witnesses the question and witnesses, now it's vanished, no? the question is gone, right. it's moved to. So, 
but the witness has not vanished. I'm presuming. But, but the focus have. is now on the conversation. Yes. So the focus has changed away from that thought to this conversation. Whose focus is it? It's yours. What can you tell me about that me? Without presuming anything. So we can say attention is moving. What is attention reporting back to? You said rightly it is reporting back to me. So I just want to know about this me. It doesn't have a color. And take your time. Don't rush through this question. Attention is going to various places. And attention is bringing back content to me, including this body is being visually perceived. You see? That which receives all this content, what is that? Someone is receiving. I yes. don't know how. So someone is receiving the same food. Yeah. And is that someone related to you in some way? Yes. In what way? Like is it you or is it related to you? It seems it is me as well. It is you. So it is you. Because it is not second hand information right. you are getting. But that someone is not the same someone who could have a concern about the future, who could have uh, issues with anything at all. Or is it? So this concerns also get registered by the same. Yeah, so let's look at that. Let's look at that. So a memory could be appearing. A thought could be appearing. Now, that which is witness to them, what is... Okay, let's start simpler. How does anything that is appearing here actually affect or hurt that one that is witnessing? It might depend on circumstances. Yes. Right but suppose we don't presume any of that. Let's just look at things as they are. Okay. So these words are coming. Right. Suppose some words came which you did not like. Right. You see? And some anger has come. Right. You see? Or some frustrations come. So even that is perceived, yes. isn't it? With our attention, it can go to anger, it can go to frustration. Yes. Or some joy can come, or bliss can come. Right? Right. All these can come. Right. Right? Now that which perceives all of this, does that take on the quality of that? No, there is, I can see that there is a perceiver yes. who is perceiving this without um, extra yes. yes, very good. So if this perceiver is qualityless, <laughs> then is it an object? Mm. Like, can there be an object yeah. without quality? No. Okay. You see? So, if this body is an object, can it contain something which is not an object? <laughs> Logically, if you have an object, logical, not to. <laughs> it cannot, isn't right. it? So, even inferentially, it shows you that if the perceiver is non objective, then it then cannot be contained in this container that we call the body. So, this exploration is like this to see which I there is, and if you find that I am the perceiver, if truly I am this perceiver, then this perceiver, what relationship does it have with Shamik or the identity that I have? Is it uh, like you will say, I am very straightforward, very simple. Really? Something like that. Now, can we can we clarify that this quality belongs to the perceiver itself? Whatever quality you consider yourself to have, right. can we check on this that is perceiving all of this and see whether that quality belongs to that? Right. And doesn't seem like that. Those are qualities of the perceiver. They are qualities of the perceiver. Right. You see. Therefore. 
and we see that this perceiver is so intimate, we call it I, right? because everything is coming to me, it is I. You see? So let's figure out what is in our experience, what is more real? That, that shaman with a lot of qualities or this perceiver which is qualityless. In our experience right now, right. we are not saying you have to give up anything. Right. Yeah. We are just looking very scientifically and saying in my direct experience right now, right. what is it that I am? Right. Am I that one with all these qualities or am I the qualityless one? It seems I'm more familiar with the one with qualities than the one with Agree, agree. We are more familiar, you see, with what is more real right now. Like can you find such a one with the qualities? Can you produce it? That's what I mean by reality. In the sense, does it have a tangible existence in this moment? You see? The perceiver is not gone anywhere. We are just looking for that one who has all these qualities of good and bad, of nice and not nice, all these opposites. Right? Does it have any existence, actual existence? It does. Now, if you were to try and play as that one, is it? Because in this moment you are empty of that one actually, naturally. But if you were to try and play as that one, can you do so without a notion? The perceiver would still sort of be there. The perceiver would be there naturally. But what about this shamik? For that you need to have a notion, isn't it? So if the sages have said that the real is that which does not come and go, is it? The one that comes and goes is not real. Right. You see? Then you can see that this perceiver is constant. But this notion, notional entity that I consider myself to be, that is coming and going. That itself is a very beautiful insight. We started such a late because uh, my daughter had some Christmas performance. I'll maybe post a video of that. It was very sweet. I'll post a video on Facebook if I can. But we have to go now because Guruji silent sitting would have started. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all so much for being in Satsang today. Sadguru Shri Mujibhava Ki Jai Sadguru Shri Anantaji Ki Jai